uh, very healthy salmon and broccoli bake. And the ingredients I've got uh, to make this, obviously, is uh, some salmon fillets. We've got broccoli, butter, flour, breadcrumbs, uh, fresh milk, mixed herbs, Dijon mustard, and salt and pepper. make a start with the sauce. I'm going to use two pans to make this. Uh, firstly, I'm going to pop the butter into this pan and I'm going to pop it over onto the stove for that. And at the same time, I'm going to take the milk and pop it into another pan and put that to heat up. It's really important when we make this sauce that the milk and the mixture that we use, we call it a roux, uh, are a, of a similar temperature. If, if they're not a similar temperature, it's more likely that the sauce will um, become lumpy. I want to try and avoid that. So immediately I can hear that the butter is starting to melt. Um, the, it, it's really important that we don't get the butter too hot, because it, if we do, um, the butter will actually burn. So um, we've got to make sure that we um, monitor that at all times. So uh, while, while that's melting slowly, I'm going to take the broccoli and what I'm going to do is just cut it into small pieces called florets. And I'm cutting off the stalks and these are like little flowers. I'm just cutting those from the back so they go into really small pieces. I find if you cut from the front, they actually they actually break up and crumble. So I'm cutting from, from the back of the barrette. I'm just listening now to the butter. It's making a, a little sizzling noise. You can see this is nearly ready. So I'll bring it across like so, and you can see that it's melted. Now I'm going to add the flour. And I'm going to mix that up. I'm using a, a plastic spoon on the metal pan and I've got to mix this until it's thoroughly mixed. I hope you can see that, that's um, all mixed together now. So, we bring it back to the stove and over a low heat I need to just cook this for about two or three minutes in order to cook out the flour. If, if we don't do that, what will happen is um, the sauce will finish with a very floury taste. So, I've now cooked this flour and butter mixture for about three or four minutes, and I'm now going to start adding the milk. So, I'll take a ladle to add the milk so that I don't uh, spill it, but also, um, to ensure that I only add the milk a small amount at a time. So I add the milk and then immediately I mix it in until it's all disappeared. And when it's disappeared I can add another ladle of the milk. It's hot enough now so I'll just move it there. I don't want the milk to boil all over. Now you can see that Flour and butter mixture, which we call a roux, has absorbed all the milk that I've added so far. So there's the butter and flour mixture, which is called a roux, and we've added some milk to that, and you can see, because I've added it over some a gentle heat, the mixture is thickened and it's absorbed all the milk. Keep adding this gradually so that our sauce will become nice and smooth. There's only two things that will make this sauce go lumpy. One is to 
add the milk too quickly, and the other is to add cold milk to the hot butter and flour mixture. So we stir that in until it's incorporated each time. now so I'll bring it across to show you you can see how it's becoming a smooth sauce very very smooth okay so we can add the remainder of the milk now I'm just removing it from the heat from time to time so that the sauce doesn't uh, it doesn't bubble vigorously, we just want it to we just want it to, um, to simmer. And we're almost at the stage now where we can leave this just to cook out while we do our other items. So I'm just gonna add the last of the milk there and it goes. I'll be able to turn this down and just leave it to simmer. Just making sure that the milk's fully incorporated. And so, all the milk's incorporated now. And as you can see, we've got this really nice smooth sauce, a basic white sauce. And you might see this in a recipe book or on a, a TV program. You might hear it called a bechamel, a basic white sauce. So I'm going to turn that down and leave it to simmer now. So I can turn my attention to the other ingredients. I'm going to take a clean pan and I'm going to just put a small amount of water in the bottom. I'm going to use this to prepare the broccoli. So I'll pop that onto the heat, like so, and then I'll carry on preparing the broccoli, just removing the stalks and preparing those tiny florets. Now I have washed this broccoli, so I don't need to wash it again. broccoli florets. I'll put those there and I can see that the water is boiling now. It's bubbling vigorously and we've got steam coming out of the top. Now this is really important. Whenever you're cooking green vegetables they should always be tipped into boiling water. Um, it's really important because it seals in the vitamin content and it helps to prevent them from uh, losing their colour. If you put them into cold water, the water-soluble vitamins are lost. Just turn them over and as if by magic they'll develop an even brighter green colour. We want these to remain crunchy, so it's, it's important we don't overcook them. And uh, I hope you're able to see that beautiful green colour that we've managed uh, to, to keep. Now I'm going to tip the broccoli straight into cold water. It actually halts the cooking process immediately. If, if we leave the broccoli in the hot water, um, it, it will become very soggy, it will fall apart and uh, it will lose that beautiful colour. So we can leave that for a moment or two now. And I'm going to take the pan to cook my salmon. I'm going to use a similar amount of water, about two and a half centimetres of water. I'm going to pop it onto the stove. While I'm here I'll just stir this sauce, like so. Okay, I'll just get rid of the rubbish. 
While I have a moment waiting for the uh, water to get up, I'm just going to take the breadcrumbs and a small amount of mixed herbs. This is optional this, you don't have to use these if you don't want to. Just drop them in like so. And they'll just throw us round so that we're thoroughly incorporated. So now I can see that the steam's um, starting to come off this water. So I know that uh, it's, it's ready to add the salmon. I'm going to be really careful now when I add this. I'm, I'm not going to pick it up with my hand because I don't want to get um, contamination from raw meat or fish onto my hands. And so I'm just going to use the spoon to push them off into this water, like so. And they go straight for a wash. Okay, so the salmon is uh, cooking uh, quite quickly, so I'm just going to pull it away from the heat so that it doesn't um, simmer too quickly. If, if it boils furiously, um, the salmon will actually break up, which would be a disappointment, really. So um, we're watching that. So while I've got a second, um, I'm going to take the, the mustard. This is uh, Dijon mustard. It's, um, it, it's a very, very mild but flavoursome type of mustard. Now, for this, I'm going to use just, just about half a teaspoon. And I'll pop it straight into the sauce, like so. And I'll just mix that around. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Now this is a, a little tip you might be interested in. I find that the easiest way to get both salt and pepper incorporated into a dish is to mix them together in a shaker and I use a proportion of six parts salt and one part pepper and that helps me to incorporate pepper in the, into a dish easily. So I'm just going to give it a little sprinkle like so. Um, I'll mix that in and it's quite important when you season food just to allow it for a minute or two for it to uh, for it to cook in, for the flavour to develop. If you, if you don't do that, you'll find that um, you put more seasoning in than you actually need to, and perhaps surprise you later on. Okay, so I can, uh, I can now do the broccoli. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lift this out into a colander, and I'm going to leave it to drain for a few minutes. So, go back to my salmon, and I'm going to check this by just pressing it with my finger. And when I press the salmon, if it bounces back, that's a good indication that it's ready. So I'm just going to give that about another two minutes. And meanwhile, stir my sauce again. Always Keep stirring the sauce just to prevent any risk of lumps forming. But as you can see, we've got a nice smooth sauce. Okay, so I'm sure the salmon will be ready now. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop it on this yellow board. And the yellow board is the one we, that we used for cooked meat and fish. It's again, it's to help prevent cross-contamination in any way. And so we're almost ready to assemble this. So I've got my dishes here. I take the broccoli and just divide it between the dishes. Now I'm using two individual dishes here, but you can use a, a large dish if you want to. And this would be a perfect kind of a dish for lunchtime or for supper. Just right, um, just the right there. I'll take my little knife, just being careful because the salmon's still quite warm, and I'm just flaking it gently with my knife. Okay, so I'll just use the palette knife 
to divide this between the two dishes. I hope you're able to see at this stage by cooking it carefully we've managed to preserve those beautiful colours uh, of the salmon and the broccoli they really go well together so all we have to do now is assemble this I try never to pour sauces over over food I always use a spoon because then you have some control and you can and you can get it just where you want it without smothering uh, the food underneath. With a, with a dish like this, it's important that you're able to see the broccoli and the salmon underneath the sauce rather than just a, a smooth lake of sauce. The other thing I do, very simple, is tap the dishes like so the sauce goes down to the bottom and then just taking care of the detail I wipe the dishes just like so because when these go in the oven if there's any little bits of food sticking to the side of the dish they'll discolour all the more more quickly than the main dish and it'll look as though they're burnt and whilst it won't spoil the dish it will detract from its appearance and so the last thing then is just to sprinkle with the breadcrumbs with the herbs and what this will do is crisp up in the oven and this will give a different texture to the dish because most of the other ingredients are, are fairly soft but this will take a nice brown colour and it will give a, a nice crunchy texture so that's the salmon and broccoli bake and it's going in the oven now These salmon and broccoli bakes have been in the oven for about 10 minutes now so um, I'm making sure that my cloth is really dry um, if, if, there's, if the cloth is done uh, when it touches the hot tray uh, it will turn to steam and uh, it's very easy to scroll yourself so I'll carefully lift these out place them onto a board and you can see that um, even after we've wiped those dishes there, there is a little bit of discoloration so if you take a damp, a damp cloth and just carefully wipe it clean, attention to detail, it just makes all the difference when you're presenting these things. And so, there you have salmon and broccoli bake. It takes about 30 minutes to make, 10 minutes to bake, and it's a lovely dish for lunch or for supper. I really hope you enjoy trying that dish at home.